In this video, I'm going to review something really interesting from Mossy, their Mossy Special Renur, one of the few, if not only, production low trail rando bikes. How special is it? Find out in this video. Welcome back, Pathless Pedlers, and if you're new to the channel, if you love bikes but don't race and are into things like gravel bikes, rando bikes, 650B, Basically, the supple life you have found your people consider subscribing. Before I start the review, I want to note once again, this is a 100% independent bike review. I'm not getting paid by Mossy. I'm not keeping the bike. And these independent bike reviews are really made possible by you guys that contribute. So the Mossy Special Randonneur, I'm not gonna say special the whole time. I'm just gonna say the, the Mazi rando bike. There are many bikes out there that look rando-esque. To my knowledge, this is the only uh, mass-produced bike by a large brand, not by an ind independent maker, that uses a low trail front end as uh, we're fond of reading in Bicycle Quarterly. What that trail number is, I'm not quite sure. I emailed the folks at Mazi and they haven't uh, quite gotten back to me. Um, if, if I figure that before, I post this video, I'll flash the number here. So the Mazi Rando bike is steel through and through, steel frame, steel fork, lots of brazons. It's got brazons for a uh, rear rack, water bottle cages, and also mid fork eyelets to run low riders. There are a bunch of modern touches. The bike has disc brakes, although they're quick release and not through axle. That might be a deal breaker for some, but for me, it's, you know, it's, it's not. In terms of drivetrain, it uses a Shimano Tiagra Brifters, Tiagra Compact Road Double, Tiagra rear, rear Derailleur, and the rear cassette, which is only an 1132. The bike ships with tubeless ready rims and the pretty ubiquitous WTB Horizons, which are nice and big and supple. And it also ships with a pair of matching steel fenders, which I did not put on. I'll get into that uh, a little bit later in the review. On our scales, the bike weighed in without the fenders about 20 28 pounds, so definitely uh, I would say on the heavier end of the spectrum, and it costs about $1,400. So in the grand scheme of bikes, uh, pretty affordable. It wasn't too long ago where uh, a bike that was built like this, that had this geometry, that had 60, 650B tires, was only available to people that bought custom bikes or happened to find an old Rene Hearst somewhere in someone's garage. So I think it's pretty cool that for this price point, which is relatively affordable, you get a lot of those features and get to dabble in this style of bike. So that's it for the big broad strokes. How does it ride? How special is it? So the front end handling was pretty interesting. You know, uh, to be honest, this is my first supposedly low trail uh, bike I've ever ridden, primarily because of the reason that, like I stated before, these kinds of bikes uh, not readily available to the mass market. So I was expecting lots of weird magical juju that you read about in Bicycle Quarterly, but for me, on the road, the handling was actually fairly neutral. I thought compared to the Surly Packrat, which also has a kind of front-loading bias geometry, that the Packrat took a lot longer to adjust to because it felt a little bit twitchier. The Mazi, on the other hand, did feel different. It's kind of hard to put into words, but it was uh, pretty natural and easy to get the hang of riding. I think probably the most notable handling characteristics is when I had a load on the front, say a handlebar bag and some low rider painters, when I was going up a steep hill or rocky terrain, it really held its line. I've loaded other bikes uh, in this same fashion that didn't have a front end bias geometry and when I was going slow uh, the bike would really wander and I'd have to st stay on top of the handlebars. Likewise going downhill it held its line surprisingly well despite going through some rough stuff. Going into high speed descents with some curves uh, I found it pretty easy to bank it into the turn. So it's an interesting combination of stability when you wanted it, but also still some agileness. In terms of rear end handling, it was stable as well. Generally, that's gonna be the adjective I use is stable. It was a good solid balanced ride, uh, nothing too exotic. It wasn't sporty either in the front on the, or the rear. So in that way, the, the geometry uh, makes a good bike for doing long rides. In terms of other ride characteristics, I thought that the you know tires did a great job in smoothing out the ride even further, uh, in particular on paved roads 
not so much on gravel roads. I found the frame maybe a little bit stiffer that the, the tires were compensating, but overall it wasn't as uh, cushioned a ride as say um, on something like the Breadwinner or the, the Ritchie Outback. Maybe it's a little bit thicker walled or not butted quite the same, but I, I feel like it didn't have any innate springiness to the frame itself. Uh, for me, it didn't plane. It was just kind of there, solid. And thank God for the 650B tires to smooth out the ride. In terms of what I liked about the bike is that it rode really well on the road. It had a fairly neutral handling and handled a front load well, even when climbing. In terms of cons, there are a few, so let's hop into that now. So one con off the bat is although it does have that low trail front bias geometry uh, that rando bikes have, it does not have the rando bike gearing. Uh, I am not a fan of the compact road double, in particular on any bikes that are, are meant to carry stuff. It's just too highly geared. Um, I know that there aren't any kind of readily available wide range doubles, but I thought, but I think that would have been a more appropriate gearing choice for this. Or even those uh, kind of subcompact Praxis cranks that we're starting to see on adventure bikes. Another con, the big elephant in the room, and, and I do mean elephant, is the bike is a little bit on the heavy side. 28 pounds without the fenders. I do appreciate that it does come with the fenders. If you're, uh, if you're looking for a bike and you commute in rainy conditions, then this is pretty much a turnkey package. You've got disc brakes, you've got fenders, you've got mounts to mount the stuff. So I'm not knocking the fenders, just yeah, you know, it's it's a little portly. Another slight con is when I was mounting the uh, low riders, I did have to play a little rack jujitsu with some spacers and longer bolts uh, so that the rack would clear the fork blades and also allow uh, the wheel to be removed in a quickly and timely manner. I initially was kind of lukewarm on the bike. Riding it naked without a whole bunch of stuff, I was like, you know, it's a little heavy. Uh, the handling's okay. It's you know, it's okay. But an interesting thing happened. When once I put a handlebar bag on there, once I put the low riders and actually started to carry gear on the bike, I feel like it kind of came to its own. When you do that, the, the weight of the bike kind of disappears. I mean, yes, everything is still a little bit heavy, but other characteristics shine through, like the front end handling when you've got a load. And, and then the bike kind of grew on me. I think that if this bike were available when I first got in touring and the only uh, game in town was a surly long haul trucker, this bike would have been my choice. So I think in that way, it's a pretty awesome bike. I think the Mossy Rando bike is to random newer bikes as the long haul trucker is to touring bikes. It's a good budget friendly entry point into this type of bike. Cause it's a big risk to, you know, have a custom Rando bike made or you know, try to find one in someone's garage and spend a lot of money. So, you know, I applaud Mossy for that. In terms of best use for this bike, I think if you're, uh, if you wanna commute, this would make an awesome bike. If you plan to do lots of primarily road touring, then I think this is an awesome bike. Not that it can't go off road, but it did feel a little bit rough when I was taking it on gravel with, with bags on the bike. I think you, you could use it as an event bike, but again, it is a little heavy, so that might be a concern to some. But overall, it's it's a good riding bike. I don't have a ton of frame of reference in terms of uh, low trail style bikes. I'm gonna defer to Jan Heine, who also has this bike uh, reviewed in their spring issue of Bicycle Quarterly. Uh, I've actually not read it, so I don't know what his impressions are. I'm, I'm going completely on my own sensory experience of this bike. Now, Jan has definitely a, a greater uh, more refined palette in terms of this style of bike. From my experience, which I think uh, a lot of you are coming from as well as being rando curious, but not having that, uh, that same ability to test different bikes like this, I think it's a good bike. It's kind of like a front loading long haul trucker, if you will, in my opinion. So that's it for this review. If you guys have any questions, leave those in the comments below. And if you like this review, if you found it helpful, if it helped you make a decision or just complicated things, uh, uh, consider supporting the channel. It's how I keep these reviews going. Check out the PayPal links. You can subscribe a little bit monthly or a big, huge million dollar one-time payment, I wish. But until next time, keep the supple side down.